snapped it. Now they have their own three game win streak. This mm -hmm. is the same team that lost in Brazil to start the season, lost their quarterback. Peter feels like they're back on track a little bit. It, it's 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 amazing to see that we go from Jordan Love being injured in Brazil mm -hmm. and it being like the season's down the tubes, and then you look at their stats and their record, it's five and two, and yeah. they're right there. But because of the Lions and Vikings, they're not getting the same love. And yet, I wake up this morning, and I can't help but feel like the Texans did let one get away. Mm. And there was a lot of confusion at the end there. Texans have the ball, the two-minute warning, and they're all the way deep in Packers territory. And C.J. Stroud, who struggled all game, he only had 86 yards, wasn't he? Their decision on the playmaking was this. Okay, handoff to Mixon. Yep. All right, Packers call a timeout. Next play, handoff to Mixon. Packers call a timeout. Like, guys... Are we going to do something? Are we going to try something? Take a shot. And then on third and 15, when they could, if you're going to run the ball, run the ball. It's an incomplete, and it stops the clock. And now the Packers get an opportunity with a minute 44. I mean, they literally wasted no time off the clock. So whereas Jordan Love's offensive head coach, Matt LaFleur, finds a way to manufacture the clock and do the time management to say, at least give us a shot to win. I almost felt like the Houston Texans were playing not to lose down the stretch there. And D'Amico Ryans is unassailable on this show. We love him. He's great. And Bobby Slowick is going to get another dozen head coaching jobs uh, interviews this offseason. Oh, yeah. They messed up. But there was a mess up there. It happens. That the play management and the clock management was off. So Packers, that's a great win. And McManus is, you know, nails it twice. And they get it. And it's fair. And it's fine. And the Packers are 5-2. and two, We love it. But if I'm a Texans fan, I'm waking up this morning, I'm thinking, how did we let that one out of our hands? That was an unbelievable way to give the game away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's crazy to think that, you know, with the Packers, especially, you know, you look at what they did. They, they gave the ball over, you know, three times, and they still were able to win the game. That's just usually not how it goes. Typically, it's a high percentage. You lose that game. But I love this defense. This defense really stepped up in critical time, especially against a team that we know, C.J. Stroud, been his receivers. They were, they've been lighting it up. But they really shut this passing offense. And this, the Packers came in as the 25th ranked pass defense. And they were able to shut down their wide receivers. I want you to take a look at this number right here because this was the production for the wide receivers uh, for the Houston Texans. The Houston Texans, they just couldn't get anything off. C.J. Stroud was under some pressure. But look at this. Mm -hmm. Schultz, Diggs, look at the amount of receptions and the amount of production. There was zero production, it really, cool. out of this. And I think it was really, too, the biggest difference was they were able to get crucial pressure, uh, sacking Stroud on crucial moments, uh, keeping Houston from, you know, field goal range. And, and that, to me, was a big difference in, in this situation. But uh, I got to give some love, too, though, to Jordan Love. Jordan Love, I, I thought... You know, he found a way to win. It wasn't his best game by, you know, by a long shot, okay. but he did find a way to win, and you always got to give credit well, for that. Well, I, I felt a little bit like when I was watching Lions-Vikings. Like, these two teams matter. Like, mm -hmm. these two yep. teams are going to be playoff teams. We're going to be watching them on a Sunday. Peter, in the Texans' case, usually it's a Saturday in the playoffs, but we'll yeah. find out. Um, at the, to your point about Jordan Love, I mentioned earlier in the show that the Chiefs are undefeated, and Mahomes is leading the league in interceptions. The co-leader, Jordan Love. It's the two of them, <laughs> a combined, I think, 11 and 2, and it's because their teams are so good. I know Jordan Love is famous, and he's the quarterback, and all the history we know about him. Top to bottom, they're really good. The defense is good. Tucker Kraft is becoming a star. We joke about his mic'd up stuff. Feels like he scores every single week. It's the same deal with the Chiefs. The quarterbacks are not playing well statistically, and they just keep winning. This is a big win. Texans are very good. I have them as a top five team in the league. Stroud played terribly, and they almost pulled this thing out. I love both of these teams. It's like the Texans had to lose, and I think they did mess up the end, Peter, but like they lost to a good team on the road. They'll be in the playoffs. We move on. I like both these teams. Yeah. That last play that we just saw, the Josh Jacobs touchdown reception, run that stat by us again. It was the longest stretch a guy So this gone. was a big deal yesterday. It's yeah. the longest stretch ever for guys having a reception and never scoring a touchdown. So Josh Jacobs had tons and tons of catches in his mm -hmm. career. He's never had a receiving touchdown, and now it's over. So probably, what, six yeah. years in the league? And yeah. yeah. Scored yeah. I, you know, I had to when – I, when I heard that during the telecast, I was like, that, yeah. can't, that can't be right. And then last night, the, the, now the, the current yeah. streak right now is Jalen Warren on the Steelers, who mm. still does not have a receiving touchdown, yeah. has tons of receptions. Just a weird thing. So when Josh Jacobs ran it in, I think he knew because it's become a joke. Yeah. What was it? There was, a, there was a joke in the NBA. Was it Ben Simmons never hitting a three? It was like <laughs> that, like this good player. And then he finally did, and everyone went crazy. He's been asked, Josh Jacobs, about it a lot. You've never had a receiving touch. So he did the Lambo leap. He yeah. did everything. That was a big deal. And, 